It's the 21st of July 2018 and I'm heading from Plymouth to Land's End, catching the train from Plymouth to Penzance and then cycling from Penzance nine miles to Land's End. Never done it before so let's go. Well it's 8.20 in the morning, I've just woken up, had a cold night but a lots of sleep and normally I wake up at about 6 so getting up at working up at 8.20 is quite good and it's barking outside by a dog and then when I looked outside the windsheet, outside the um, tent saw horses in the background as well so it's really nice and um, I'll try and reach the other pinnacle today or this morning then I need to dive back to Penzance, spend the rest of the afternoon in Penzance so that I make sure I'm on time for the train and then back to Plymouth And about half past nine, ten o'clock last night, had some visitors. They came and pitched uh, across the, uh, the little gorge. It was so quiet sleeping like um, here last night. It's just like having nectar, ne nectar in the ears. Just no noise at all, no wind, nothing. So this tent's uh, lightweight and it's uh, got ventilation areas everywhere which means it's quite drafty so that's what made it cool last night in the tent and it's also got condensation on the the outer side so I'll dry it off uh, leave it open dry it off when I go for a, a slight walk a small walk and uh, have my pasty and Fanta for breakfast and then go for my walk and then uh, head back into Penzance so you've got a beautiful beach here but the water is very cold and usually get a lot of water is but the beach is so cold. Hello guys, how are you? No booking me, thanks. Last night I left my fans from the stream to keep chill, so I'll have that with my pasty this morning. So yesterday when I came to this little valley I saw the horse boots, but I didn't see the horses. And that's why I decided to uh, camp this side of the fence, just in case my uh, tent, which could have been down there, I got trampled on it. So it's beautiful having it here. And the fence is going down well. It's like a chill, and so is the pasty. Not just the, is the water pure down here, but I can't get over how the sound is pure as well. If you understand what I mean, it's so peaceful here. It's like poetry. I swear I was watching the sunsets this Silly helicopter going into Land's End Air, that works with. Hello cows, you're the furthest south cows in the UK. Nothing's going to beat you here. And same to you. Woohoo! Gorgeous, aren't you? It's like a game this. Now you're the furthest uh, south cow in the UK. Well, yesterday morning when I looked at the weather forecast before I left Plymouth, the forecast for the southwest was um, cloudy and slightly overcast for yesterday and a beautiful sunny day today. And it's living up to it. It's beautiful. It's nine o'clock in the morning and it's warm and balmy and it's so peaceful here. I just can't get over it. It's just like nectar to the eardrums. And it was last night as well, even though it's cold. This person down there giving us a sense of bearing. 
to where I'm headed for, where I tried to get to last night. <clears throat> How quick people become small objects in the landscape of the world. I only passed them five minutes ago and had a quick little talk with them. And there's the farthest lighthouse in the UK. This is Gwenup Head Coast Guard and that writing is the telephone number uh, to get hold of them by and it might also be a, a boat call sign as well as it's uh, plastered across in big writing towards the sea. So these cones pointing out uh, or on the pinnacle up by the sea are built of concrete. I presume they're for uh, mapping. The only sound I can hear for miles is somebody raking and it's the guy at the top at the Coast Guard station actually sweeping the road. Another boat coming from the east heading towards the Channel Islands. And a little hidden village there. Oh, some people down there photographing and recording the wildlife. Just look at how precarious those stones look. But just standing here gives me that tingling feeling that you get from a roller coaster ride. It's quite nice, but makes you aware of your senses at the same time. So this is Porth Gower and um, I think I'll probably have to start heading back soon because uh, later on today as mentioned I've got to cycle back down to Penzance which is nine miles and I don't want to really overstretch myself physically uh, before I get the train back and make sure I get the train back down to Plymouth and then decide what I'm, well next weekend I'm going to be away again thank goodness and then decide what I'm doing next. Beautiful little village and look at this cove. And there's obviously a roadway through there, so I'll check that out before I start heading back. Beautiful little hidden gems everywhere here. So Paul's Gower is part of the St Auburn estate and uh, there used to be a lot of small fishing boats here and now there's only a few 
and lobsters are the main catch. So I've got to go back up here, back to Land's End. Where's Land's End? There you go. So the people I, uh, I was recording, they were the wildlife photographers earlier on, were from West Yorkshire and the girl's name is Bethan. Don't know what the lad's name is, but they're down in the village now just getting a coffee. Just can't get over these boulders that have been here for hundreds of years and they're just getting really to roll into the sea, which could take another hundred of years, but it will happen. Well, considering I only got into Penzance at um, one o'clock yesterday, I feel as though I've been at Land's End for a week already and it's fantastic. When you get the weather like this, it's beautiful escapism. Everything is pure and healthy, from crystal clear waters of the sea, even though it's cold from the Atlantic, um, to silence and peace of mind. This time of the year anyway, as you can think it's horrendous in the winter when you get the, the Atlantic storms coming in. This is quite scary. We might imagine getting lost on a foggy night on the moors here and ending up coming across this. No fencing or anything. So I'm feeling a bit edgy here because <laughs> I've only got trainers on. I don't want to slip or anything. But that's one side of the cliff. There's the narrow path and there's the other big hole that I was just pointing out. And I'm going to go up there. And there's the ridge from a different angle. You've got the big drop on that side, then you've got the narrow footpath there, and then you've got an enormous drop on the other side. And I don't know if there's a bridge underneath, because I'm not going to check. So when you're doing walks like this by yourself, it's always best to be overcautious than undercautious, uh, because uh, obviously nobody to help you. Or if there is, there'd be ages before they get here or get rescue in. So uh, I'm not prepared to take risks by myself. So you've got Gunhili Satellite Station that links us to America and across the world and they had the first cable link across the ocean from there. Uh, there's a point over there and the Isles of Scilly is in that direction and Wolf Rock Lighthouse which you can't see today. Trainers like this are probably one of the worst things to wear in these sort of locations because they're like nylon bases, which is very, very slippy. Well, probably one of the slippiest surfaces you can have in this sort of location. So you have to be overcautious when you're near the edges. So this is the little pinnacle I was looking at last night. And I just love the structural effect of it. And over there, you've either got the Coast Guard or a fishing dinghy. So I'm not into witchcraft, conspiracy theories, or extreme religion. I am into being realistic and seeing things with open eyes and taking in information visually rather than reading other people's interpretations of things because everybody's version of reality is different to everybody else's and everybody's got agendas behind what they do at every level, including me. Look at this big beast. The dog I just recorded seems to be lost. He's wandering around by himself. But uh, nothing I can do. Well, there's no wrong. There's several of them. There's a lady there as well. So that's okay. I think. Can we see a lady? Yeah, they should be alright. Oh, there's the Well, with um, no um, binoculars and um, slightly dodgy eyesight these days, I couldn't see whether those dogs were with anybody or not, but it's probably not for me to go chasing after them because um, you don't know how vicious they are if you get too close. So I'll leave it and just let things take the course. 
That's interesting, it looks a bit like a turn tap or something. Another hundred years and that top will have gone, but the base will still be there. That's rubber there, so it's obviously um, designed to um, as a water supply or a sewage supply or something like that. I would have thought we'll know anything else. It's quite interesting because in all the walking I've done today, the only area where there's any midges is this little area here. You can't see them obviously because they're too small for the camera, but there's quite a few little black midges around. So this is walking up the track from where my campsite is and there's the White House and that's where the sunset was last night but I've probably got some beautiful views from up here. So why are you by yourself, my friend? Friends over there are leaving and the horses are hanging around them, probably thinking they're going to get some food, which is pretty obvious, really. So I've got the Nikon camera here that doesn't work. And uh, time to pack the tent up. That's the Nikon that's reading full all the time and not doing anything, which is a shame because the battery's fully charged. Got to head back to Plymouth now, uh, so I've got to um, go to Penzance first. The same route as it came, obviously. I got 
got you, JD. I got you. I got you, JD. Come down and see if we can swim in the sea. I got you. That's it, all packed up. Get some more water from the stream before I go back. And uh, then it's back to um, Land's End and Penzance. So I'm not going to bother looking at the clock because I'll get there whenever because I've got a free range ticket for the afternoon. Found another tent peg so I'll take that back with me and make sure everything's tidy. Don't leave any rubbish. And uh, it's been paradise for, it seems like a week already and it's only been just over a day. Which has been fantastic. Beautiful. So that house and its apartment is lying empty. Could be a holiday apartment, ready, getting ready for the holiday season because it's well maintained. Right, got everything packed. I've uh, been walking miles and then cycling quite a bit yesterday. So I've got to now get back to Land's End, cycle back to Penzance another mile, nine miles. And then spend a little time in Penzance. So I've got to make sure I've got my energy levels up. So I'll probably go and have something to eat at Land's End first. And then head back to Penzance, take my time, and then get the train back to Plymouth. A bit of a pain because those old station, uh, those uh, horses have been annoyed and, and been worried by uh, an old station dog down there at the moment, and the owner seems to be doing very little about it. So uh, they're being a bit cautious. So some sections of this path are, to say the least, incredibly hairy for a bike, so you have to be very careful or not even bring a bike along here at all because I don't like the idea of the erosion by bringing a bike so close to the edge in any case. Um, just to take a look at, look at this, some of this. So easy with the bike to get pushed over. Probably this track isn't designed for bike in, in any case. On certain sections the pedals can push you out over the side. So you've got to be incredibly careful. And looking back at it, I don't think I'll bring a bike along here again. Well, that was Harry coming back with the bike. A very narrow ledge along the side there. And even narrower around the other, the other side. And I could have left the bike at Land's End because the tent I'm carrying is so okay, the tent I'm carrying is pretty light, so I could have got away with it. Bye bye house, bye bye horses, bye bye beach. It's nice meeting you, maybe catch up again sometime. Let's see if I have any more time this summer. Look at those people, they must have swum out there. You get a lot of sea cliff climbers around here that just jump into the ocean. And that's probably what they are because you can't really see them coming all the way around here to swim otherwise. Rabbits to small horses to llamas. Got everything here.
It's a bike. You've never seen one before. So that's the uh, well-maintained uh, small holding right at the end of Land's End. Oh, it's really good. So I was told this Land's End is highly commercial. It's not that commercial. There's a few buildings and the locals can get free parking here all year round. And in the winter the uh, tourist pit closes, which is uh, predictable really. Right, back at Land's End now, and it's no time to head back to uh, Land's End by bike, but I'm going to have a nice cream. So now I'm having a Cornish cookie, Kelly's ice cream, and Fanta, and then it's uh, back to um, Penzance by bike, so it's nine miles and it's pretty hot as well, so it's good. So the uh, Kelly's ice cream has a nice, soft, silky flavour to it. Beautiful, very creamy. Not as sweet and gluttony as uh, a lot of European ice creams, it's nice and soft and mellow. And the Cornish cookie has cherries in it, it's full of oats, and it's got a nice icing on the top as well. And that's also very tasty. This one, kind of. This man because he challenged the UK's ways of thinking, walking naked, he ended up in prison a few times. And he shouldn't have. So Steve Gone caught the headlines more than once when he decided to walk the distance naked apart from his boots. Starting in June 2003, he had his fair share of hold-ups, like so many before him. However, most of Steve's were down to being arrested and raped for showing more than just his the enthusiasm. He finally arrived at Janet Groats in January 2004, finding a warm welcome despite the cold temperatures. He made the journey as a spot celebration of human body and desert with the freedom of to go naked in a, uh, in a, and to exert the freedom to go naked in a public area. The only people that seem to have problems with public needed nudity are the police in the UK. Most of the people I've seen uh, have no problems with it at all. And um, clap and cheer. Right, I've got my sugar, sugar levels up. As you can see now, I've eaten the, uh, the uh, local cake, the ice cream, and that Fanta, which I love. So now it's time to... That's a bit like uh, Mr. Coles from uh, the Travel Channel then. Um, so now I'm going to cycle back to Penzance and then look at a train to catch back to Plymouth. So this is the start of the UK and it's marked as such. On the back of these signs you've got the end of the UK. 
and I've met some very fine people here. Uh, so they're not all bad, <laughs> not like in Plymouth. Uh, well, a lot of them, some good ones in Plymouth, but there's an awful lot of bad ones as well. So uh, I'm going to head back to that city now and see what happens next. So not too far from here, you've got Paradise Park. That's probably well worth a visit uh, if you come to Land's End. Or should we say pub? That's Senen. Well, another hot, balmy day, like the Mediterranean. And I was talking to a local lady on one of the walks um, earlier on. And she was telling me it's been very dry here for weeks as well. Well, it's a glorious day and it's seven miles back to Penzance. And just down there you've got uh, Land's End Airport one, one and a quarter miles away. So St. Ives Theatre are doing Bugs Malone and my voice is hoarse because I'm dehydrated after cycling. I'm now back from the uh, Land's End in beautiful Penzance. And what a great place this is, it's like being in the Mediterranean here. Well it was in Land's End as well, it's just very uh, laid back and bohemian, it's really nice here. Look how clear the water is here. And there's Penzance Lido.
Yeah. What are your names? Eve. Saffron and Ruby. Saffron and Ruby. 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 Have you got a Facebook? Yeah, we've got a page called Olive Moon. Olive Moon? Yeah. Olive Thanks Moon. very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just had something to eat, Dominic's pizza, and that's it for the weekend. I'm heading back to Plymouth now, it's six o'clock, and should be back at Plymouth at about nine, so it's been a great weekend. Saffron and Ruby. Ruby. Have you got Facebook? Yeah, we've got a page called Olive Moon. Yeah. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. This has been a Chris Muffield video 2018. You can contact me at CCS Photo 12 at mail.com. And if you can help to sponsor my videos, you can pay for me at CCS Photo 1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this video.